assume today is much better day than I had yesterday. Um, before I get started, I told you yesterday that I make toothpicks out of those. It's not quite finished yet, but it started out looking like that. Um, it's one of the things I do when I fidget. My son Chris, my youngest son, is here. He's changing the brake calipers out on my old van. I, uh, they desperately need it. Uh, he's a superb mechanic. When he gets done, uh, then I'll lay a hundred dollar bill in his hands. Um, we did that probably about two years ago, but the problem is uh, where I took you in the video uh, going down through Fun Valley, I used to drive that a lot and I drive down through the creek itself. Wasn't the brightest idea I had. That was before Jerry finished the crossing at the dam. He hadn't finished the dam and poured the skirt for the road to get across yet. Everybody did it, and everybody had problems with their brake calipers. Why? Well, it's the water looks cold and clear, and it is cold, and it is clear. Uh, when Linda washed the windshield on my van the other day so we could film, she's getting a bottle full and dumping it on the windshield. That water's cold. Yeah, it is. Um, it's also got dirt in it and that microscopic dirt or the small granules they get into everything when you drive through that a lot um, I would apologize for my rant yesterday but I needed to get it off my chest and everything I said is basically true as I know it um, today I've got to do a radio show here in a little bit it's about 5 to 1 I'm going to upload this video um, I've already been out I had to go pick calipers and brake fluid up Chris came in just before I started shooting this about 10 minutes before that coffee is hot. It asked me if I had brake fluid and I bought a big bottle of it. He's gonna, I told him to come back in when he's done. Uh, the next step after the brake calipers, not today, maybe this weekend sometimes, I've got to get the ventilation under the dash repaired. And he's capable of doing that. Um, Linda came in, loved on me a little bit, which I appreciate. That's one of her roosters out there letting everybody know he's a he and not a she. Um, I'm not depressed, even though I might seem a little down. I'm mostly tired. Linda was up really late, and I, as I was. She wasn't feeling well. Said she finally got to sleep about 4 o'clock. Um, I actually got some sleep last night. I, uh, after doing this and after the van's fixed, um, I'll take and road it and maybe go put some gas in it. Um, probably go to the finish line in, uh, Davis rather than the pie shop. I don't know. Um. And uh, Linda's got a roast on for supper, and I'm going to, um, I forgot what my train of thought, I'm tired if you can't tell, but I feel pretty good. Um,
not a lot going on just getting my van worked on I've got to get me a microwave for in here um, I'll probably get a big one for the house and take mine back for in here um, Before I do that, though, I want to build that eight-foot-long table. I've got to measure that one, how deep it is uh, between the wall and the outside edge of it. And the reason for that, I want to uh, hang. Hold that thought. I got to turn some AC on in here. I've been taken by the the Tucklo gnomes. Um, Linda had it on. I guess I'm just gonna have to leave it on. It it is a little toasty in here. It says it's 72 degrees outside. Let me see what my phone says. Phone says 69. Um, Let's see what the weather service says. Weather service says 71. So, who knows. The reason the van's getting done expeditiously is because I hid these for myself. I put a napkin over them. That way I wouldn't say, well, I'll get around to it. Actually, I have a schedule I'm trying to keep on a lot of stuff. And the uh, van functioning as it should is a very big part of that. Um, I've got to do a little touch-up on the outside. I've got to... Uh, get a deal offline since it would basically there's no way I can repair the speedometer in it uh, there is but I'm not gonna go to all that trouble but I can uh, this thing here has a little screw on the back uh, place to, to put a bolt My son Chris is the one that told me about the application. I just haven't loaded it to my phone yet. But you can grab the phone. That's actually for a selfie stick. But I can mount it on the dash, put the phone right there, and uh, tell how fast I'm going. I'm going to have to have something... <coughs> What I have left to do are seat covers, inverter inside, speedometer, ventilation under the dash, fixing the gas gauge so I can tell how much fuel is in it and two new back tires. Then put all the gear in it and get ready to rock and roll and go. That's it. That sounds like a lot of stuff, but not compared to what I was dealing with to begin with. Um, it's not a simple matter of getting it done as I can afford it, which I can never afford anything. It's a matter of when my son has time to do the work. I don't trust anybody else to work on it. I mean, just to be blunt about it. Um, I went and bought 90, 90 uh, dollars and some odds 85 cents worth of parts for it. I'll get 32 dollars back or something like that. The deal is let me see what I got here. Let me see what the core charge is on there. $13. I get $26 back. But if I went to an actual garage, 
to get calipers changed out on that van, it would end up costing me three, four hundred, well, about four hundred plus actually. I've done it before, I forgot about that. And the thing is, every time but once that I've taken a vehicle to a garage, I've been screwed. I've been burnt. I've been cheated and ripped off. The one exception is a, a, a garage in Lone Grove, America, L-O-N-E Grove, America, that my good friend Monty Jones referred me to, and they did a superb job. They did it for the price they quoted, actually a little cheaper maybe, and did it right. But because they're, they're uh, honorable men that run that garage, they got a backlog of people trying to get in there. And I have a son that is an actual mechanic, so he's out there fixing it. And uh, I probably ought to build a building on this place and, and just set him into, up for business. And he could, he, you know, he's looking for a job right now, steady income, but he could make some serious coin just doing vehicle repairs. He's really good at it. The pro, you know, and he did that for a while for a guy named GT, um, who was a con artist, a scam artist. Chris did all the work, and GT got the money. That's how that happened. Unfortunately, auto mechanics as a whole, just like plumbers, have a bad reputation for charging for stuff they didn't do breaking something and so that you have to bring it back to them. Guys in Lone Grove didn't do that. And I'm very thankful. So kudos to you, Monty. Uh, my son Chris won't do that. Um, now, I'm going to be getting off here. I've got to get to work and get that done. Uh, the uh, podcast done. But Mom and John, I love you. I hope you're doing well. My brother Michael Paul, I love you. I hope you're doing well. My friend Chris Kimball in Florida, I love you. I hope you're doing well. My buddy Monty in Lone, L-O-N-E, Grove, Oklahoma, I love you and I hope you're doing well. Shelly Dion in Illinois, I love you. I hope you're doing well. David Talaga in Illinois, I love you. I hope you're doing well. Jackie Brill Sands, S-A-N-D-S. I hope you and yours are doing well. Folks, got to get off of here. I do. It's a... Uh... And like that sign right there says, be kind. It pays eternal dividends. It does. God bless you. Bye.